Rendition of Fallen Angels. The rendition of Fallen Angels goes a little something like this. In the beginning, people believed in a purified lifestyle, and this is why humanity's destiny surrounds the angelic realms. Back then, it was believed that only men could possess the ability to be angels and gods. Matthew 22:30 says Jesus said a resurrection takes place before becoming an angel. Yet, after the saints arose there were fallen angels, which means some still resulted in evilness. Nowadays, it is believed that once you form a new life in Jesus by accepting salvation, you inherit the ability to develop angelic or godly character, in which you are considered to be a good person. However, there are broader options through religions for the form of resurrection and when it is to take place. For those who believe Jesus won't be coming back. Humanity is offered the path of heaven as angels on earth, through a resurrection of purification and the word. And for those who believe he will return, there to wait until he comes back to be resurrected. Afterward, the saved will live heavenly on earth, while the unsaved will live spiritually dead on earth, and people will still sin. It is a choice to make according to your beliefs and religion. Even though some people naturally adhere to angelic or godly characteristics others do not. The Bible teaches we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. If you were an angel and have fallen from God's grace, renew your faith in him. Otherwise, you may be classified as a fallen angel. If you have never, don't plan on forming, or renewing your life in Jesus, you may be incapable of regarding any knowledge for God's glory. And you may possess an eternal evil soul, people who possess eternal evil souls are incapable of good behavior. Jesus said, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. John 5 29, not enough people know what purification means. Most people are living a convoluted and polluted lifestyle that includes unnatural additives in foods, pollutants in the air quality to other substances are being put in and on the body. I firmly believe, if you aren't the type that would give God the glory of having experienced near death, he probably wouldn't allow you to experience heaven on earth. Both are a humbling experience, graceful movement, and victorious overall joy. These are general reasons why more are becoming excessive evildoers. Whatever type of knowledge you increase the mind with is the direction you most likely will take. Jesus is the rock of true discernment however, some false teachings are surrounding the church were established for his name's sake. These teachings surround propaganda derived from mythical themes of the virgin birth and the resurrection. According to the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Pesher of the Gospel, Jesus was born into his inheritance as an illegitimate child. Through the marriage of Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast out seven demons, he is the husbandman of the church of monotheism. And his resurrection was nothing more than a revivification from being given poison. The false mythical teachings are making people ignore the need for purification as an earthly form of resurrection. And most aren't waiting until Jesus comes back, before resulting in lawlessness. Therefore, not all will adapt and thus die the final death decree even before becoming an angel. Matthew 25 41, just be aware but don't let it hinder success in life. With people who glorify and honor the Holy Spirit of God within themselves, this is called the spirit of discernment. It is true discernment. Parents who were taught true discernment usually guide their kids and raise them responsibly. True discernment allows you to admit fault and wrong. Parents who were taught false discernment as a child usually criticize, judge, and raise their kids irresponsibly. They often cause their children to inherit certain personality traits such as anxiousness, callousness, cognitive distortion, compulsivity, identity problems, oppositionality, rejection, restricted expression, social avoidance, stimulus seeking, and suspiciousness. Each one of these qualities is associated with a personality disorder. Evil spirits meditate between good and evil thoughts, trying to dominate the mind upon every impulse with false discernment. False discernment hinders you from admitting faults and wrongs. Often haughty spirits of demons can have you thinking they are the pathway to a god. False thoughts can be a preconceived comfort zone and a feeling of reality, but most thoughts that have truths to them take some time to prove accurate. Once you read and understand, what the Bible is saying from your perspective, those preconceived thoughts become inaccurate and false. It doesn't matter whether your name was in the Bible, it matters whether you desire true discernment. It is possible to desire true discernment or overcome demonic spirits while growing up. While I never adapted to negative discernment, I wasn't taught true discernment. However, I did want to change over time. All this to say if you teach your kids to lie or it is okay to not take responsibility for their wrong actions. They will grow up thinking everything they do is justified by doing wrong things while hindering others' success in life. And just because your parents were more concerned about false beliefs, doctrines, and opinions it doesn't mean you can't change or overcome. It is best not to choose unrighteous paths for your kids. It is wise to get it right the first time by teaching the kids righteous paths, so they don't waste an entire lifetime going down false paths of life looking for a strong foundation. Set aside through purification. When you are pure you are free from cancers, diseases, and disorders. Jesus said in Matthew 11 4 sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, 
that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. For the most part, being purified consists of freedom from anything that distorts your life such as adult errats, contaminates, evil, guilt, and pollutes. And being free from all distortion enables you to be set aside for God's glory to fulfill His will. All this doesn't mean you won't be a sinner, because we all were born with a sinful nature. Some people's sinful nature intensifies, while others acknowledge changing all their evil ways to be set aside. Falsehood Lack of conforming to truth or fact is the act of lying or making false statements. It is a tactic many people use when deceiving others with fabrication. They may present one side of the story and invent the other. Absolute deception is when a person invents the entire story of falsehood. Path example number one, a person moves from the state in which they were born, and while moving from state to state they never return to the birthplace. Path example number two, a person marries three or more times, and still marries again changing their last name multiple times. Falsehood mentality. Afterward, the person falsifies documents as a result of moving and remarrying multiple times. To cope with the extremities of hardship, they start using alcohol and illegal drugs. Eventually, they extort money from family and friends to pay bills, etc. And they invent lies to tell them as to why their life appears deceptive. Also, they tell family and friends they are going to be moving again, due to not being able to keep up with the bills in the past. Those small issues later turn into habits, whereas they overspend finances on insignificant things and then extort money from others to pay bills etc. These are the people that will tell you to keep it 100. And although we all suffer trial tests no extortion is considered good. All to say, this is how we pass deceptiveness and falsehood onto the kids. Something so small can turn into a big lie and then manifest into others' lives through the influence of our spirit. In this case, it isn't what you are teaching your kids, it is what you aren't teaching them. Disembody spirit. When a person's soul or spirit is divested from the body, it is disembodied, and it may appear as a ghostly figure of the imagination. Spiritually the soul is a part of a human body. Consciously the spirit is a vital principle of a human body, and it can influence others whether bad or good. Once a person is devoured in deception, their soul is full of falsehood, while their spirit travels to another human being. And then they may appear as a disembodied spirit to the person who was done evil upon their behalf. Spirits. God's angels are pure, they messenger for him and take compassion upon people in a time of need. The godly conform to his laws and wishes, they minister or prophesy to people who are lost in sin. Although human spirits can be righteous or unrighteous. The righteous influence the humble, meek, and peacemakers. All of which can be the result of standards according to the gospel. Demonic spirits demonize, dehumanize, influence, invade, instigate, seduce, and torment victims. They are exclusive to cults or false doctrines, fallen angels, indwellers, tricksters, unjust practices, and may even pretend to be geniuses, etc. The unrighteous influences the criminally insane, prideful, rapists who target children, money launders, and swindlers. In which the evilness can be the result of Satanism tactics for one's benefit. And any familiar or non-familiar spirit can involve satanic rituals. Only a few spirit types are gifted and the others are unjust practices. Types of Demonic Spirits 1. Ancestral, involvement refers to the demonic or occult practice of a person's ancestors, it is a common reason and major cause for demonic affliction or demonization. Ancestors prefer to strike fear into their youth and when they grow up, the results are outbursts speaking passive of hindered thoughts. 2. Adopted, adoptive parent involvement of demonizing while growing up. Similar to ancestral demons. 3. Step family, step parent involvement of demonizing while growing up. Similar to ancestral demons. 4. Evil human spirits, a family member, friend, or anyone remains an evil person and doesn't acknowledge true discernment or saving grace point of prayer. And either way, after that they can become an enemy. Someone else's actions should not define you if it doesn't justify your actions. Demonic families in action. The family traditions may consist of adultery, alcohol, and illegal drug usage, assault and battery, burglary, extortion, false accusers, lying, murder, pimping, prostitution, robbery, selling illegal drugs, sexual abuse and assaults, theft, or vandalism of property. Not all families have honorable traditions, and the unfavorable ones tend to be more disturbing. Some may even groom kids to be used for sex, and when it is passed down no one perceives it as wrong. Just simply a way to receive more entitlements as a child. Even though some of those unfavorable traditions were established after the Bible was written and published. Most people who have suffered from demonization rebel against people of authority and elders to commit one or two of those sinful acts. Usually, the traditions of elders reveal vulnerable factors. God is supposed to depart the bondage of demonic spirit dwellings, however, ancestral spirits don't leave when a person becomes a believer. Truthfully, being raised with the newness of life in Jesus Christ isn't enough to stop dwellings of ancestral spirits. 
their world revolves around defilement. Demonic spirits word usage. Demonic spirits may use normal words like humans, and it translates differently in the spirit world. For example, feeling can mean distress over others' bitterness, disconnect, envy, or strife towards you. Acknowledging one's own idea will get your faith in God detoured, or things will get you ahead in life. And sense can mean to imagine this illusion that probably could take place, and deeply affect you. Thought can mean to think of some kind of evilness to bring upon others or self for revenge. Bribery or flattery may be used to force victims to keep commitments of sinful acts. Demonic spirits will only acknowledge participation when they are trying to get you to commit to the sinful acts. Demonization stare. The stare is used by demonic and evil human spirits, and once newcomers have been influenced, they are taught the demon stare. They may have newcomers stare down a mirror, etc., before using the tactic. The stare is used to demonize, harass, and torment victims, it starts with eyes wide open and then forms into a fixed gaze with intensity. It makes the victim's body, mind, and soul vulnerable while, fearing uncertainty and inducing off into a trance-like state waiting for demon attacks. The stare tactic is used to feed off humans, faults, negativity, and sufferings to benefit a group, or to one's advantage. Demonization stare includes arrogance, boldness, deception, falsehood, and lies. Attacks can include, bodily harm, extortion, reputation distortion, verbal abuse, and can be used against victims or families of victims. When you choose entanglements as a newcomer of evil spirits that help form torn comforts in your livelihood. You are numbing with temporary entangling choices, and it is just an easy button for relieving the fear of torn comforts. People from various backgrounds use the stare tactic, there is no exclusive evilness that excludes you from hell on earth, and any of those tactics establishes evilness. The point of life is to stand up to demonic spirits in the mirror and rise above reprehensible behavior. You must form mental clarity in your life, this means facing fear discomforts to keep it real with self. Discomforts will give away, and relief will replace them. So, work on replacing the demon stare with a kind and loving spirit to show compassion and love towards others. Can Christians be consumed with demon dwellings? Yes, anyone who sins can, otherwise no one would ever be influenced to sin. What does demonize mean? To be subject to the influence of demons, and after that be demon-like. What does dehumanize mean? To be deprived of human attributes or qualities that express one's individuality. Evil human spirits' characters can consist of arrogance, boasting, bribery, criticizer, deceit, dehumanizing, false accusing, flattery, greed, haughtiness, instigator, judging, lying, marveling, rebellion, selfish pride, and even seduction. Evil human spirits. Generally, they are affliction creators who use wicked deeds against vulnerable and weak people, and this drives victims insane. Their brainwashing tactics through influence, instigation, and seduction usually entangle others. They are unrighteous people who are taught false discernment, in which they become defile rogues, and loyal to random habitual notions. Usually, they were abused and are angry, resentful, upset, and want to distract or use others as a crutch while causing various problems. Evil spirits can cause odd effects sexually, they may be interested in both the same and opposite genders, and may exert a strong influence on victims. A female evil spirit may influence males to rape other females. They may influence other females to be promiscuous or provocative, to random date guys and have children. Male evil spirits may influence gang or group rape upon females or males. Either way, they are consumed with other evil spirits marveling over random evil acts, lurking, staring, and stressing innocent victims daily. And they continually get cast out of heaven on earth, just as Satan did from heaven and became a fallen angel. This is a reason to not engage in casual sex, even if you are single and unattached, it is very easy for evil spirits to distract and then influence. The evil spirits are those who influence to deceive, destroy, drunken, envy, greed, gluttony, kill, lie, lust, manipulate, rob, steal, strife even become violent for self-righteousness to get away with consequences. Good spirits are those who remind you to live righteously according to God's standards and to acknowledge consequences for actions. How do evil spirits gain access to control and dominate? One great aspect is revealed in Proverbs 6:26. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. If a man marries an adulterous woman the evil spirits dominate leaving the man a subordinate in his everyday life. And this can affect everything surrounding him, family, friends, kids, etc. In Deuteronomy 24, 1-4 it says when, a man hath taken a wife, and marry her, and it comes to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. It says she can marry another man, if he divorces her, the former husband cannot marry her again she is defiled. And the Son of God said in Revelation 2:20, Notwithstanding I have a thing against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, 
to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Genius vs. Seducing spirits. A genius has an extraordinary IQ of 140 or above, they are idolized and often worshipped for their accomplishments. This means a brain has used the ability to reach the full potential of a higher intellectual form of education. The genius status shows signs of domination and idolization over a large population. To seduce is to lead astray or corrupt, away from the faith and higher intellectual principles of education, etc. While evil spirits are taught false discernment, they play upon their deaf and dumb abilities. And while the evil spirits full of seduction are trying to control, dominate, and manipulate lives, they marvel with arrogance and greed pretending to have a genius status. The evil spirits pretend to form dominance over victims to be idolized or worshipped by other evil spirits for having deceived with their seducing spirit. Seducing spirits can be a molester or someone that was molested, and they once were an evil human spirit who turned demonic. They are more likely to use baiting guilt or misery to one's advantage. Why honoring seducing spirits can lead to failure. Seducing spirits of demons high energy is formed during the victim's failure moments. The victim would not benefit under any circumstance with seducing spirits control and influence. Dictionary terms. Demon, an evil spirit, devil or frenemies. An evil influence or passion. Dwelling, to live or stay as a permanent resident, reside. Evil, morally wrong or bad, immoral, wicked, evil deeds, an evil life. Invade, to enter forcefully as an enemy, go into with hostile intent. Sex, to engage in sexual intercourse. Sexual, relating to sex, having sexual organs or reproducing by processes involving both sexes. Spirit, the principle of conscious life, the vital principle in humans, animating the body or mediating between body and soul.